once again, thanks to Jean for this great opportunity. And I will be presenting that I prefer, uh, I prefer still prone position. Well, it's not I prefer still prone position, but I prefer prone position because of easy positioning, wide space for different calicial puncture, short route to the kidney, high stone clearance rate in prone position, safe and effective even in spinal deformities. Kidney is less mobile in prone position and it gives a clear, clear endovision. <coughs> well, it's a worldwide practice patterns of PCNL. The majority of the urologists, about 80%, still use prone positioning for PCNL get their own access under fluoroscopy guidance and use a balloon for track dilatation or some other track dilatations. Well, there are various types of supine position, but when you do in prone position, general consensus of prone position is it takes longer time. But where you are practicing, if you see this unedited video, this is our regular practice in Nepal. <clears throat> After placement of uretric catheter, it hardly takes one minute in our setup to keep the patient in prone position. We perform PCNL under spinal anesthesia. And we, are, we don't have to worry about the tube and patient can rotate his head and he can uh, take care of his hands and all. This is an unedited video. As you can see here, in our setup, it takes one minute to flip the patient from after ureteric catheterization. Well, why prone position? If you see this picture, you have a wide space to make a puncture, whether if you want to go to upper pole or middle pole, and if you want to do a lateral puncture, so you have a uh, wide space for the puncture. So this is one video to demonstrate to you uh, why prone position. It is very convenient when you keep the patient in prone, if, even if you want to go more middle puncture with the upper pole, or more lateral puncture, supra 12 or supra 11. So it's very, very convenient in prone position. This may be difficult to achieve when you do in supine position. Regarding the visceral organ to PCNL tract distance is shorter when patients are placed into the prone position on bolsters compared with the supine position. When prone PCNL is contemplated, pre-operative planning, CT scans, that are performed in the prone position with bolster provide better preoperative assessment of colon to percutaneous renal tract distance. So when you keep the patient in prone and when you make a lot more lateral punctures, and that's, that forms the shortest route to the kidney. When you do in supine PCNL, the track is most of the time track is more uh, long. So supine or prone PCNL do anatomical changes make it worse. The anatomical changes related to supine positioning does not increase the risk of PCNL complications. Although supine PCNL may have some benefits over prone PCNL, there will also be some technical difficulties related to the surgeon's manipulations, which are related with the longer access track and more limited access field. So this is the position, supine position, and we have only limited space for the puncture and track dilatation. Is the supine position superior to the prone position for percutaneous nephrolithotomy? PCNL in the supine position had a significantly lower stone free rate than that in prone position. Well, this is a meta-analysis, supine versus prone position in PCNL for uh, renal calculi. Compared with the prone position, 
the PCNL in the supine position has slightly lower rate of stone clearance, albeit shorter uh, mean operative time and low incidence of blood transfusions. Well, positions related anesthesiological consideration and surgical outcomes are prone PCNL, a review of a current literature. Clinical outcome of prone PCNL do not demonstrate an increased rate of anesthesiological complication compared to the spine, supine approach. Standardization of turnover of position and reduction of the operative time warrant a faster and complication free recovery. Prone versus modified supine position in PCNL, a prospective randomized study. Both the prone and modified supine are effective and safe for PCNL. Operation time was longer in the modified supine group. Patients undergoing PCNL in the modified supine position more frequently required a second operation due to a lower stone clearance rate. Well, the mean operative time was significantly lower for prone <coughs> versus supine PCNL regardless of the method of the tract dilatation. Again, the stone free rate was significantly higher in prone and uh, lower rates of failed procedures in prone. So regarding patient with the spinal deformities, PCNL in prone position, PCNL is an effective, safe, and minimally invasive procedure for the treatment of kidney stones in patient with spinal deformities and it can be performed with low morbidity and high success rates. To achieve better results and minimizing the risk factors, systematic and anatomical evaluation for anesthesia and operative planning are crucial before surgeries. Safety and efficacy of PCNL in patients with severe skeletal deformities. Prone PCNL is safe and effective for managing kidney stones in patients with severe skeletal deformities. This was patient with the bilateral London stone who underwent PCNL in my center uh, some 10 years back. And it is more convenient to do PCNL in prone position. This is an interesting case, a solitary kidney who underwent mini PCNL in Kuwait while I visited. So regarding the mobility of kidney in supine position, uh, it's a, when you keep the patient in supine, kidney is too mobile and sometimes we have to give a pressure with the hand to uh, make it fixed so that we can make a puncture easily. But if you see in prone position, it is not that mobile as compared to supine position. So same case that is in prone position as compared to supine, it's not that mobile and puncture can be done easily. The another advantage of uh, doing PCNL in prone position is it gives a clear vision. But when you do this uh, in supine position, most of the time, the system is collapsed. When you do in prone position, some degree of water retained in the pelvic calcium system, and we can inspect even in the mild hydrotic nephrotic kidney from middle calyx to lower calyx, upper pole, and even the upper part of the ureter without any difficulty. It works as a flexible, uh, uh, flexible scopes. And with the help of this uh, mini PCNL in prone position and on table, we can decide more than 90% stone clearance, more than 90% stone clearance. And the, another beauty of mini is it can avoid multiple tracts. This is possible only in mini PCNL. So I conclude my talk that worldwide practice patterns of percutaneous nephrolithotomy which is safe and effective. Thank you very much. Okay. So 
I'll be talking on fluoroscopy guidance puncture. The advantages of fluoroscopy guided puncture is uh, like this. It's a, it gives a clear visibility of the needle and the guide wire. Important for the entire procedure, renal access, guide wire manipulation, track dilatation, residual stone evaluation, and post-procedural nephrogram. It's a familiarity to the most urologists. It's ability to visualize radio-opaque calculi, and contrast media can be used to aid in stone localization and demonstrates anatomical details. As I mentioned that, when we perform PCNL, we can see the guide wire, dilators, and which calyx to choose, everything is clear on uh, fluoroscopy view. Here are some of the papers, European section of Euro Technology Educational Video on Fluoroscopy Guided Puncture in PCNL. Uh, fluoroscopy guided, uh, guidance during PCNL puncture is a very efficient method for access establishment. The surgeon should be familiar with all available variation of fluoroscopic approach in order to be prepared to adopt puncture technical uh, technique for any given scenario. Well, the total fluoroscopy duration and exposure time during the puncture were both significantly less than in the ultrasound group. Expertise in fluoroscopy guided expertise in fluoroscopy guided access is essential to effectively achieve access in all possible situations. So I prefer to do all this PCNL procedure under fluoroscopy guided, uh, fluoroscopy guided puncture. And so it, it is very precise when we perform PCNL uh, under fluoroscopy guidance. So we can target the desired calyx, we can enter through the phoenix of the calyx. Well, ultrasound, uh, ultrasound guided mean PCNL nephrolithotomy with suction sheet. Again, in these cases, fluoroscopy could determine the relationship between the angle and depth of the puncture needle and the target calyces by the, by rotating the CM to help needle puncture and track dilatation. What about the pulse versus continuous? Standard continuous fluoroscopy of 30 frames per second and pulse fluoroscopy of two, uh, two uh, fluoroscopy uh, group. The use of pulse fluoroscopy leads to significantly low radiation exposure comparing to the use of continuous fluoroscopy. This advantage does not compromise the safety and efficacy of the procedure. We perform these punctures under the fluoroscopy guidance. We do not puncture continuously we first advance the needle to the desired calyx, only then we start pulse fluoroscopy. That minimizes radiation dose. Well, reducing fluoroscopy time in percutaneous nephrolithotomy. The fluoroscopy time in PCNL can be significantly reduced by adopting simple technique and being increasingly vigilant of its uses, thereby reducing radiation exposure to the surgeon and the patient. The most concern in using CM is fluoroscopy is the radiation safety. Radiation safety issues in fluoroscopy during percutaneous nephrolithotomy. The practice of PCNL procedures seems to be quite safe with radiation point of view. The quick, easy, and economical method of estimation of radiation dose using survey meter may need for the calibration with the standard thermal luminescence dosimetry method. If you see these pictures, this can achieve only with the fluoroscopy guided puncture. If you want to target the upper pole, you can just advance, we can advance needle through the upper pole. 
if you see to middle or lower pole, we can precisely target under fluoroscopy, which is not possible in ultrasound, ultrasound guided puncture. If you see, this is one example of the lower pole stone. You won't be able to recognize the furnace of the callus. But yes, if there is a hydronephrotic kidney, you may be able to puncture the furnace of the callus. So the overall operating complications and the perioperative blood transfusion rates were significantly higher in the USC than the, uh, than the fluorosco uh, fluoroscopy guided mini placenial drugs. Well, fluoroscopy screening time and radiation dose during complete supine placenial nephrolithotomy, BMI success rate and track number can be significantly significant predictor for uh, fluoroscopy screening time and uh, radiation dose, uh, dose during PCNL. Identifying the affecting factors on fluoroscopy screening time and the radiation dose can help the surgeon to minimize the danger of radiation exposure by predicting and pre-operating plan. Can ultrasound guide, uh, guidance reduce radiation exposure significantly in PCNL? If you see this paper, out of 66 PCNL patients, renal puncture was successful in 22 patients in fluoroscopy with ultrasound assisted group and 44 patients in the fluoroscopy group. In all cases, fluoroscopy was used for track dilatation and confirmation of ureteral catheter positioning at the beginning of the procedure. So this is one paper. Uh, from Professor Lee from Beijing, who does all PCNL under uh, ultrasound guided. So four cases converted to open surgery and two patients lost the diseased kidney due to the refractory bleeding in the early stage of PCNL. Well, as I demonstrated this morning, how we minimize the radiation during the puncture. This is the case going through the upper pole. As you can see here, once you make the alignment, we can use the forceps and we can advance by centimeter by centimeter, go down till you feel the give away. Or we can adjust, we can advance the needle till we can move the kidney as you can see here, and confirming that you are in the system. And we can remove the needle, we can aspirate and check. The only disadvantage in mini PCNL making a vertical track is stone evacuation. Well, under the fluoroscopic guidance, we can also do saline push technique, which was advocated by Dr. S.K. Pal. And this can be done only under fluoroscopy, not by the ultrasound. So I conclude my talk that it has an easy learning curve for beginners. Precise initial puncture through phoenix of the calyx can be done with the help of fluoroscopy only. Precise angle and depth of puncture can be just with the help of fluoroscopy. Dilatation under fluoroscopy vision is precise. Radiation hazard is less when we use pulse fluoroscopy. Thank you very much.